When you are about to have a paper accepted, this is always a high point. And uh, I'm still very happy by every new paper that comes out. These are the exciting bits in your life as a researcher. And we all know that there are days and weeks where things are much less exciting. And uh, but one lives for those high points. Every paper is worth reading. Or put it the other way around, one way to make sure that you are a highly cited researcher is to ensure that every new paper that you are part of is worth reading. So it comes back to ensuring that the science is solid and that the writing is good. An important thing that often is overlooked are the abstract and the figures. You want to make sure that your abstract which is the first thing that people will read in this digital age on your paper, is clear, understandable, not only for your sub-experts, but for the average reader in your more general field, and that it captures the main message of your paper, including its novelty. You want to make sure that the figures that you put in your paper are self-explanatory. And one way that helps me is to th Think of the figures that you prepare on a PowerPoint slide in a talk, in an overview talk. Does that figure convey the message of the paper without having half a page of text around it? Some papers create real novelty and have the potential for excitement in the field. Not every paper does that. And it is up to your judgment, up to the judgment of your peers in your group or in your institute or in your college, which of the papers that you are involved in may warrant this. If there is something that is novel or even groundbreaking or markedly advancing the field in a conservative way, it is worthwhile to think about things like a press release, intensive activity on social media, communications, and the best way to attack this, in my view, is to have a communication plan that can be prepared in the time between acceptance of the paper and online publication. So that ideally you would talk to people in your press office or in your comms team, the person who runs the Twitter accounts in your college or in your institute, and have them all lined up to say the same thing through various channels at the time that the paper is published online. Many journals now support this type of activity. They may ask you for a summary figure, they may ask you to upload supplementary information online and point people to that, they may ask you to do short videos or other recorded statements about your research that can be put on the journal website or on the university website. You may also have contacts within your professional networks. You may be active in a professional organization, you may be active in postgraduate education activities, and these organizations may also have an interest to support, endorse, release, publish press releases, social media communications, statements about your work that can increase its visibility. Again, if you shout about everything, you're not going to be heard. If you never shout, you're not going to be heard either. And finding the right balance and picking the good papers for these activities is one of the tricks that I would advise you to try to follow.